back. It's good to see you. Yes, and it's good to be seen. So, as you may see now, the bluebells are out and it looks absolutely gorgeous. That can only mean one thing, that spring is finally here after a long winter. Though it wasn't a bad winter really. We had a bit of snow as you probably saw from the last video. Well, the last time I saw or did a video which included the bluebells was the, the fire stove and um, I do believe it was the bow drill. So that was a couple of years ago. But it's always good as you can see to see the bluebells. Nice. Okay. So today I wanted to talk about um, well, review a trail cam that I bought quite a while ago. I've had it for some time now and uh, I thought now would probably be as good a time as any to give it my thoughts. I'm not going to go techno on it because um, you can look that up online. There's a lot to read about it. But I'm just going to give you some clips on um, what I got from it and how I set it up and just basically how I use it. The one I got was the Browning um, trail cam. Uh, so what we do is, we'll, uh, I've got it set up over the back there. So we walk over there now and then I can show you it already set up and then uh, we can uh, have a little look at it. Okay, so here it is. This is my Browning Recon Force Edge 4K trail camera. And the reasons for me to buy one was because I really wanted to see what was going on this woodland in here. Because most of the time when you're in here, you'll see the odd deer, the odd fox, squirrels and woodpeckers and so forth, but not a lot else. Um, I've done some tracking in here, seen sign, but the ultimate way to see what's in here, when you're not here, is with one of these. These are brilliant. Day or night, 24-7, these will record anything that comes within 100 foot at night and 80 foot during the day. Um, incredible. I mean, I've got some pretty good footage from this um, in different parts of the woodland which I've sort of like set up. I've set it up on the trail there, which I'll show you some footage of what I've got. And uh, you can see why these are, are good to have if you're thinking about buying one. So let's have a, just have a quick look of it. Dimension roughly, you've got five inches, four inches and 2.5. So they're not particularly big at all. And um, all you need to do to set one up is they do recommend about three foot off the ground. I've stuck them high in the tree looking down and they work just as well. You pick up just as well. But the ultimate footage that you're going to get of animals, if you're sort of at their level, and that really is the best sort of footage you're going to get. So this is actually held on to the tree by this nylon strap. They are quite big straps, but they will not go around big, massive trees. So just be aware of that. Um, I mean... There's not many trees in here, it won't go round, but I have struggled with a few big um, oaks, a few big chestnuts, that are in, and you just gotta relocate it. So on the strap itself, there's like this crocodile clip thing and a spring-loaded push thing there. So to release it, you just push that and pull the strap through here. Okay, so we got her off, we might as well just have a quick look at the back. The back you've got this uh, metal bracket, which obviously secures it. I mean, this is mostly plastic and you can see it's plastic. But on the back here, which is good, they've just put a metal bracket on for security. You've got these two holes here, which you could put a, a metal cable through and put a padlock on it for security. They do sell them. I haven't got one, I've been, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. 
I've been quite lucky, nobody's stolen it. So there is times when I put it out and it's like, I really hope it's there when I get back. And yeah, it, it has been, so I've been quite lucky. But I do know if I don't put a strap on it, at some point, somebody's gonna get a camera. So, you know, and they retail at 225 pounds, I think I paid for mine. So um, yeah, so somebody's gonna get a camera if I'm not careful. But in theory, nobody's supposed to be in this woodlands anyway. So let's just go to a better area where the light's a lot better because the sun's coming this way and uh, it might sort of play havoc on the camera. So let's go sit somewhere else and I'll show you around the camera a bit more. But while I'm here, there is a reason that I've set this up. If I pan the camera around, you can see that I've put a log, put some nuts in it for the badgers. And I wanted to see them playing with it. Obviously at night, they uh, come and get some sort of free food and I'll show you again the the footage that I got from it. Great footage. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this. On the side here, we have this plastic hinge Okay, but what you also must remember that this is a fully waterproof um, camera, so leaving it out in the rain or snow is not really a problem for it because it's all it's all weather sealed. So what we do is we pop this open, right, and inside here you have a two-inch screen, and uh, you have all the buttons here. We'll just run through that quickly in a minute. But on the bottom here you have your SD card. Well, I would recommend you get a 64 gigabyte ultra card, right? I have used the extremes and they just do not work. So be aware of that, it's very important. I mean, I've had this out for a week, come back and there's been no footage. Took me a little while in some investigation to realize that these just don't work with the uh, higher end cards. So just get an ultra and then uh, you should be fine. Right, on the bottom there, you have an eject button on there, and that basically... <laughs> it's not coming out! There you go. You've got your batteries, you've got eight of them. I've got um, AA batteries in there. You can get rechargeables, of course. On the bottom there, you can have a uh, power pack. So it's a 12 volt external power pack if you wanted it. That goes in there, so if you're leaving it for mega lengths of time, plug it into a power pack and that will run that quite happily. I haven't done that yet, though I do think that is a good idea. Um, so right, let's go. So you've got your on button, on and off. And as it comes up, comes up with browning. Hopefully you can see it. I know there's a bit of a reflection on there. All your lights, buttons illuminating green there. You've got a mode button. So if we go into a mode, you've got camera set, playback, that's playback your footage and you've got your home screen, okay? And in the middle there, you obviously there are directional pads and that E there is like a, like a set button. So if we just go quickly into camera setup, and you've got your date, your time, operation mode, um, photo quality, video length, video quality, photo delay, uh, multi-shot mode, temperature unit, camera name, blah blah because you can name the, the camera because on the bottom of your screen you can turn on this really useful information um, uh, it will give you like uh, the time, it will give you the temperature and it will give you a full moon or it gives you a moon dial which is really handy Okay, so going on, you've got a motion test, that's really handy. When you're setting a camera up and you're not sure, um, you can do a, a motion test. So you can, you can walk about and, and, yeah, you can sort of see it, see it working. Okay, so then you've got, I, I never use it personally, but motion detection, um, battery type, because obviously you can put in the battery type you're using. Uh, trigger speed, which is really good. You can alter your trigger speeds um, fast or slower. There, I mean, again, I'm not going to get techno, so again, you're going to have to look it up if you want more on it. Um, default settings if you want to go back to normal. Time lapse, is it, obviously they do time lapse because it's a photography camera as well. Time period and delete all would be like um, 
formatting the card, which is uh, you know something they're going to have to do every now and again, and and so on and so on. It just keeps going on with different um, obviously languages, capture timer, firmware upgrade, which is really important if there's a new firmware upgrade. I've not yet done it myself. The camera works fine. I'm quite happy with it, so I, I probably won't bother with that. And then it just goes back. In the bottom there, you've got page numbers. So that's um, basically um, some of the functions that it's got. But you can also, if you go back to the mode, you go playback, you go in there, and it will tell you how much you've got, or how many you've got on there, and videos or photos. And you, all you do to play it is you push the but, um, button there, and it will play. But I can't see bugger all. So we go to another one. There you go. There's my mug shot of when I was setting the camera up. So you can just push that. not a very long one so obviously you stopped it there you goes another one there and so on so you can scroll through and look at the um, videos that you've put on there I normally when I do that I normally just um, bring my adapter to the phone so I can put the SD card into my phone and then I can download all the footage onto my phone and then look at it that way because um, th th these screens are okay and they are color screens but they're certainly not the best quality to look back at your video on. So I would suggest either taking your phone or an iPad out, um, whatever phone you got. I mean, I've got an iPhone, so I can't talk about the Samsung. I don't know how that system works. But um, I, I use my phone to look at, back at my footage, which is so much better. Okay, so that, that's basically the functions. And it really is customizable um, for any situation that you may be in i've tweaked a couple of the settings but it's a lot of it is just standard um i mean oh, that's just that's just it it's just standard settings a lot of my stuff i have lots i have tweaked it okay so on the front of the, the camera here obviously that's your camera this is your infrared sensors right and this that there is like a little light flashes there and that's obviously to tell you it's working and that's that's handy when you're trying to set it up with a motion um, detector thing you know when I, well, I talked about that earlier and this here is your sensor but um, through time I've got blue tits that seem to be attacking it I've got little dinks in it where they've pecked it so <laughs> yeah it's a bit bit inconvenient but there there you go that's if you leave your camera up there you don't know what's going to um, attack it. Mine, in my case, it's blue t attacks mine, and they've obviously put a little dink in the sensor thing there, which obviously hasn't hurt it at all. Most inconvenient. <laughs> right. Right, there's a couple of things that I'd just like to mention um, that I think is worth sort of talking about quickly. It's, not, it's no major thing, but it's something to be aware of. Obviously, first being the memory card, make sure you get the right memory card. And two, um, it is worth, when you set the camera up, you get like a countdown. And that's like a countdown to the video starts recording. And it is worth just sort of seeing that it is doing that because there's a couple of times where I have set the camera up, gone off for a week, come back and there's been absolutely no footage at all. For some unknown reason, the, the camera just wasn't working properly all I did was turned it off turned it back on and it seemed to be working perfectly so it's, it's you do get glitches every now and again it is electrical there's out in the elements it was in the middle of winter when it's minus three who knows it might have been too cold for it um, the other thing is worth mentioning is the battery life when the battery life indicator shows about 60% or 50% at night this is for winter only, obviously in the summer where it's a little bit warmer it might be a little bit different but I was finding that the video recording was only something like 5 or 10 seconds long. Normally at night you get um, 20 seconds worth of footage um, during the day. I've set mine up to 30 seconds in the day and then I've got 20 seconds at night. 20 seconds is about as much as it will record at night 
but you can set the camera up to record continuously until the animal goes away but I didn't want to do that in case the animal stays there forever and it just fills the card up so I've got it does does every 30 seconds etc etc but what you do find is that when your battery power goes down between 60 and 50 percent or even lower than that at night it will reduce your um, video length to about I've had two seconds I've had five seconds I've had 10 seconds and that is purely because the infrared is being used and obviously that draws a lot of power from the, the, the battery itself so it's reducing the record time it's just worth knowing that even though it's still got 50% on the battery it's brilliant for days it, it don't need the infrared but at night it will struggle just just remember that it is worth knowing that um, there's a couple of times I've had some badgers um, literally doing some interesting stuff and I've got like five seconds six seconds I mean that's not long enough I need I need I need my full 20 seconds or 30 seconds whatever I've you know um, programmed the camera to do so just be aware of that I've not really heard anybody mention that um, if you know if that's a problem in my camera <laughs> let me know you know in the comments below but I just find that mine does that all the time so when I come out I am I have to make sure that the uh, battery is um, you know fully charged if I'm leaving it for a week normally overnight or during the day if I'm coming back in the evening or um, the next day sometimes if it's down to 60 percent I don't normally bother just bear that in mind I know I did waffle on about that a little bit but it is worth knowing that I learned the hard way couldn't work out why all my footage was low but then hey presto I've worked it out uh, Right here we have a natural animal run, okay? And I wanna know what's using this animal run, whether it be day or night. The animal run here goes to a little gap in the fence which goes into this field here. Um, so the best thing to do is try and find a place for the camera that's, you know, not too high, not too low. Just sort of, you know, like I say, we talked about the three foot, I saw a three foot, four foot, What's a really good thing to remember is that you really don't want your camera pointing towards the sun. In the UK it would be sort of south. Because if the sun is up and something steps in front of it, like me now, you're just going to get a silhouette. See? It's not going to work. So you need to sort of be able to put your camera the other way. Okay, you, I bleached out a bit there. But just through... Um, experience of using this camera over a period of time i mean i check the weather forecast normally in the uk it's raining but we are having some sun <laughs> and it's annoying my camera obviously so um check the weather forecast if it's really overclassed and definitely cloudy then you can point it south but periodically um if it's a, if it's a sunny day or you live in a sunny area try not to point your camera towards the sun i.e. if the sun's going from east to west over the equator the equator is obviously south that way i don't want it to be facing that way if it's going to get a lot of sun exposure just a little thing to remember there i've got some washed out footage where i've just pointed it towards the sun and until the sun goes over far enough that it's cast a shadow by a tree then it's been pretty useless again you know learn the hard way so let's go find a place to put the camera up and see what we get right so what i'm going to do this is a little bit thinner really but what i could do if i wanted to is put a stick behind there and pack that out a bit to bring that away but i think we might just just get away with it so what i'm going to do is just feed that through uh, there they're quite robust cameras, so they do get knocked around a lot when you're putting them up. Okay, so that's pretty well on there, and that's pretty good, but the only trouble is, see, what I do now is I turn it on, let it fire up 
and then what I try and do is get to the side but try and see if I can still see the screen and the screen is pointing down at the ground here which is no good over here behind me there's the hole in the, um, the fence to allow the animals to get in and out of the field so what I normally do is I'll get just get a stick break it off and on the back here it's got a raised bit of plastic obviously that's to allow for the strap there so you have to loosen it off a bit put that under the foot there on the back there or you could just put it there if you wanted to it's a bit tricky and what that's done is it's brought the camera up let's go back into my mode yeah that's better now I can see the fence behind me and if I wanted to come up even more all I would do is find a bigger stick to bring that up and that applies to the top if you want to come down see because the tree's angled as opposed to being straight you can um, put a stick on the back here or underneath now if I want to come out even more I just pull that away you can see if I put a bigger stick under there that will pull that out enough so I can get my view of the um, the fence at the back there but this is the run so what I do is I stick my stick back in there that pulled out it's a bit tricky okay that's pretty good it's not going to go anywhere Again, remember just to make sure that you've got the, in the top um, right hand corner there's like a little countdown from 30 seconds and after 30 seconds the, uh, the camera will start recording. So that's good. So all I do is close her up, put the strap out of the way. Okay, so that's my take on the Browning Recon Forced Edge 4K, blah, blah. Why did they give them such long titles? I do not know. But that's the camera that I've been using. And I must admit, I do give it the thumbs up. It's uh, allowed me to see what's going on in the woodland when I'm not around. Um, I've shown you sort of how I set it up. Um, but there's not really a huge amount to them really. They can be as complicated as you want them to or as easy as you want them to. But anyway, if you liked the video, thumbs up, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you on the next video, which hopefully won't be as long as the last one. We're with the COVID hopefully well and truly behind us. We should be able to get out a little bit more. So stay safe, get out there, do some bushcraft, and I will see you on the next one. Adiós, amigos.